So if I have my family field and we're all together and we have a pet, a dog, that that, that pet would be somehow I- embedded within that same field. Yes. Dogs are social animals anyway, and they live in packs, and they sort of adopt us as their pack when mm-hmm. we raise them in a domesticated all right, situation. Let's go on to another part of parapsychology, very different, and that's precognition. The apparent or real ability or capacity to sense something that will has not yet happened yet, something in the future. Well, I mean, precognition is perhaps the most mind-boggling aspect of parapsychology because it goes against our normal ideas of causation coming only from the past. Um, but I think there's good evidence that precognition really happens. First of all, from precognitive dreams. Secondly, all, all sorts of premonitions, some of which may be explicable by physical causes, dogs knowing when there's going to be earthquakes, animals picking up when a tsunami is going to happen, may or may not be explained by normal physical clues. We don't know because there's been very little research on these things. Um, then there's the, um, there are parapsychological tests that suggest precognition happens. And then there are the pre-sentiment experiments that suggest that people can feel emotional arousals five or six seconds before some emotionally disturbing situation occurs in a way that doesn't fit with our normal ideas of causation. A lot of evidence that suggests that influences from the future can influence us in the present. Now, the interesting thing that this research has revealed, to my mind the most interesting aspect of this research, is that it shows we're not reacting to future events as such. We're we're reacting to our own awareness of those events in the future. What precognition is of is not of the external world, It's of our own minds in the future. Just as memory represents um, our recalling what's happened to us in the past, often it's a vague feeling rather than a clear knowing that's involved in these things. And um, it's really somehow tapping into our own minds in the future, just as memory is tapping into our own minds in the past. Some people say that we should really think of this as pre-call rather than recall, that we somehow can pre-call what happens in our minds in the future to a limited extent, much less than we can recall what happened in the past. But since you believe this is all part of the physical world, how could something in the future in our own minds then uh, uh, our capacity to apprehend that now when it hasn't happened yet? What, what, What possible mechanism in the physical world could account for that? Well, we're talking about the properties of the mind, and the mind is what we know least about in physical terms. And that's why consciousness studies is the most exciting area of modern science, in my opinion, because we know so little about our minds and how they work and how they relate to our brains. And one of the things that's most obvious about our minds from our own experience is that our minds are spread out in time. Our minds are in time, in the sense that memory is a hugely important part of our mental activity, our connection with the past, which may have nothing to do with what's going on around us now. I mean, I can recall things that happened to me when I was five years old, hundreds of miles from here. Um, And it's not by a stimulus here. There's something that enables me to connect with the past. Now, our minds are also, all the time, connected with the future. In your mind and mine, there are innumerable plans, intentions, and goals, where you're going to go next, um, uh, what we're going to do tomorrow, uh, all this kind of thing. Our minds are full of future possibilities. In fact, that's what they're mainly full of. They're considering future actions. Our minds are, in a sense, in the future. Um, And the connections within our minds from the past to the present and possibly from the future to the present are not like some alien intrusion onto something. Our minds are all to do with connections through time. And the idea that there can be connections through time within our minds, which precognition implies or presentiment implies, doesn't seem to me alien to the nature of the mind. It may be alien to the way we normally think about physics, but physics is a different thing from the mind, and physicists don't study minds, so they have a more limited view of reality. But what, what is the mechanism that, that can mediate such a, a, uh, a transmission or, or s- such knowledge? 
I is, it, is it a physical mechanism that ultimately can be described by physics, or is, is it impossible to be described by physics? Well, no, I don't think it's impossible to be described by physics. And I think that probably the most interesting starting point is aspects of quantum theory, uh, which suggests there are movements from the future to the present. Um, as you know, there are many ways of interpreting quantum theory. Um, one of the ones I find most interesting is Kramer's interactional interpretation. Um, what he says is that in physics, this is well known, that the arrow of time is reversible. Even in Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, you know, light travels one way, but the equations work just as well for something traveling the other way. So when light falls on my eye from a distant star at night, I look up at the sky, it may take 10 years for that light to have reached my eye. But Maxwell's equation says at the moment that photon was emitted, uh, you can equally well say that something 10 years ago, uh, that, that something left my eye, moved back 10 years in time and hit the star then. The equations of physics actually have these mysterious influences from the future. And in quantum theory, this is very clear. And in the transactional interpretation, uh, they would argue that when I see that light from the star, the photon comes from the star to my eye. At the same time, an influence goes from my eye 10 years backwards in time to hit the surface of the star where that photon was emitted from. And that influence is from the future to the past. Physics is full of these kinds of mysterious future to past influences. And most physicists say, oh, well, they don't make sense, they don't fit with the experience, well, let's just forget about them. But they're actually in the equations of physics. And I think by taking them seriously, we could actually make a bridge uh, between uh, these precognitive phenomena and, um, and at least quantum physics.